An aggressive player is like that guy who shows up to the party an hour early. He's always around, he gets in everybody's way, and he's just plain annoying to deal with. He makes you wish that you didn't even throw a party in the first place, and you're just hoping that somebody is going to show up to save you from this individual whose life goal seems to be ruining your life. Now, some of you are going to hear that analogy, and you're going to say, Oh, preach it, brother. I hate guys like that. And others of you are going to whisper quietly with your head down, I want to be just like that guy because you're a terror to deal with as well. Now, regardless, right, when you're out there braving the ladder, whether you're the party crasher or you're trying to keep your villagers safe from one, it's important to realize that some civilizations are going to be more adept than others at making life more difficult. If you like being that guy, you're going to want to understand how you can hit your opponent quickly so that that way you can go run downstairs and get that hot pocket out of the oven before your house burns down. And if you like sitting back and letting the enemy come to you, you know, because you're confident or arrogant or maybe you're just lazy, you're going to want to understand what those more aggressive civilizations are capable of so that you can defend your base and avoid the temptation to throw your PC out the window. In this video, we're going to talk about what makes a good aggressive civilization and understand how the 42 civilizations in AoE 2DE stack up in terms of their ability to crash the party. Let's get after it. Hey everybody, it's your boy Jimmy James 59 and today we're going to be looking at the best aggressive civilizations tier list. I did best defensive civilizations a month or so ago. I will put a link to that at the end of this one. Now before I jump into the content here, I want to activate sellout mode here and I want to start off with a riddle. What I want to share with you today is something that you have heard many times, but you haven't actually heard me talk about very much, right? Interesting. So anybody who's been watching my channel knows that I typically have background music. You can hear some background music at the moment. And I think I'm one of the first people in Age of Empires 2 content creation to really make this a mainstay in their videos. Now, for a time, I used some music from, say, streambeats.com, and I think that Harris Heller and those guys have a really fantastic project, but I've always kind of done about half and half with uh, my own music that I produce, and over the last few months, I have exclusively relied on my own catalog. I produce music, and I put it out on Spotify, basically everywhere music uh, can be streamed, and a number of people have commented to me that they enjoy the vibe that the music creates, and because so many of you have been, whether you know it or not, listening to my songs for uh, quite a bit of time, I wanted to let you all know that I just released my second album. It's called Martian Wave. Uh, I write under the name Duke Montrose, uh, something of my uh, sonic alter ego, and it's a really neat concept album about the exploration of Mars, and it's something of a love letter to space exploration in general. What is very unique about it is that it actual, actually uses the sounds from the Mars rover Perseverance that were transmitted back to Earth for the first time last October. And so the song that was in the intro video for this, um, that song actually uses as one of the musical instruments and it's part of the musical texture of the song uh, is a fluid pump from the Perseverance rover. And so there's just a lot of things like that in the album, uh, again, like taking those sounds together to creating, you sometimes using them in place of instruments and other times to just really add a different sort of texture and flavor to the album. So if you enjoy the music on this channel, right, I just wanted to let you all know that that's out there. I highly encourage you to check it out. It's uh, great stuff to just kind of, you know, chill, study, play video games, etc. So I'll put a link to that at the end of this video, right? Okay, now let's jump into things here. So when we think about aggression, right, we're going to be looking at a few qualities here. The first quality are early game bonuses, right? Uh, dark and Feudal Age eco bonuses that allow you to get up a little bit faster, and also military bonuses that allow you to either put more military in the field, do more damage, right? Those kinds of things 
basically anything that allows you to field an army so that you can dictate the pace of the game because that's really what aggression i think is, is all about where you are forcing your opponent to react you're controlling the tempo of the game and you're pushing pushing the uh the initiative there right things that allow you to take initiative the second thing that's going to allow you to do that are having strong power spikes right strong power spikes can occur at different periods of the game for different civilizations and so we want to think about right those moments that really allow you to sock it to your opponent and cause them to play in a more reactionary way and then the third thing is thinking about high value units right value is some combination of the ability to do damage the durability to survive damage and then also thinking about affordability as well so we're going to put that in here because having an army means that you can press in on your opponent now one thing i'll say just before we get to actually ranking these civs is that you'll notice there's no f tier and in the defensive civilizations tier list we had one but in this one we don't and there's a reason why because a lot of aggression takes place in the early game and it kind of skews that way like defensive civilizations skew to playing later and i think aggressive civilizations skew a bit more to playing early right because you're trying to take initiative the fact that civilizations feudal ages are much more similar than their castle age and imperial ages where tech tree uh, gaps are starting to really take hold because of that i think that there's not really an an f civilization here in terms of their ability ability to do aggression I think most civs can do it at least sort of a below average level, but there's no civ in the game that just like fails utterly, I think. Um, you know, there may be one or two and I'll talk about that. But I will say that, however, one thing to keep in mind is that, is that because civilizations are more similar than they are different early on, small bonuses in the early game can actually have a really big impact so we want to keep that balance in our head so that being said right let's go ahead we're going to get started here and the first thing we're going to do is look at the aztecs and i think this is an easy s tier you have you have both a dark age eco and military bonus that carries into the feudal age the castle age eagle spam with aztecs is extremely strong because of the ability to to produce units faster and then not only that but once you get in the late game even if you don't have necessarily a what I would call a great power unit, you have a lot of units that cover your base as well that allow you to sustain fights, whether it's great skirmishers, you can go really solid infantry jaguar warriors, you have the eagles, arbalist and bracer. You just have a lot of options with the sib that enables you to keep the fight taking it to the enemy and not have to give up ground. The one issue with the civilization, I think, is that because you don't have stables, you're missing hussars for late game raiding and eagles i think in the late game are not quite a replacement for that because they're not as disposable having said that what i think keeps aztecs in the s tier is their relic bonus right the relic bonus the fact that if you can get three or four relics for the civilization you can field gold armies for a fair amount of time uh, and that's something the other american civilizations i think find it a little bit more difficult to say so i think for that reason we gotta put aztecs here in the s tier now Looking at the Bengalis, I think the Bengalis to me they're D tier. I mean, you're missing knight camels. You just have really poor mobility. I think your eco bonus doesn't really give you a nice power spike. And so it's just a tough time with this civilization, I think. Um, usually wind up playing into slower unit comps or unit comps where you're really having to take a long time to build up and play a lot of defense. So for that, Bengalis, I think, have to go into D tier. Now, if we look at Berbers, I like Berbers as a B tier. I think in the early game, they're a little bit slow because you don't really have a proper eco bonus. But once you get to the mid game and you can take advantage of their cheaper, cheaper stable units, not all of a sudden you can start dictating fights and get a lot of army on the field. So I think based on that, we'll just put them solid there in the middle in the B tier. Now with the Bohemians, I think Bohemians are more of a D tier sieve. This is a sieve. It's really nice on arena and closed maps. I think it's okay on open maps, but it's a kind of sieve, it feels more like a counter puncher sieve, where it's either you're playing with the really good spearmen, right, to keep pressure off of you so you can build up and get to, you know, hand cannons with chemistry, or maybe the chemistry crossbows, but that takes a lot of time to get to. 
you're maybe trying to go with with trash monks or Hussite wagons, something like that. And the late game, you want to get to Hufnisa. And all of those strategies are really about, you know, turtling up, I think, playing more defensive, and then getting to your powerful options and then pushing out. So you're not winning through taking initiative in the game. You're winning by staying alive and, and, and you know, building up that spirit bomb, to use a Dragon Ball reference. So I just think that that's, uh, again, there's nothing wrong with that play style, but it's just not the most aggressive. Next up, looking at the Britons. I think Britons are pretty solid. Uh, I'd put them in the A tier for aggression. You have really nice Dark Age and mid-game eco bonuses. The faster working ranges are fantastic. And I think in general, your tech tree is pretty darn nice in that you have, you have a fully upgraded barracks and you're only missing bloodlines for your stable units um, in terms of the technologies. And of course, you're missing Paladin and Hussar. But you still have pretty decent stable units in the late game. Where I think to me Britons become more of an A tier sieve is that I do think later on through the game, if you're up against a really mobile civilization, you might find that you can't control the pace. You kind of have to push slowly down the middle, uh, you know, maybe go halberdiers or something like that to, to keep your base safe or rely on your actually really strong castles. So I just think it's a civilization that depending on the matchup might not always be able to play aggressively. Now we can contrast that actually with the next sieve, the Bulgarians. I think Bulgarians are A tier, fastest mineral drums rush in the game, cheaper and faster working blacksmiths enable you to get technologies and feudal age to get a really sick teched out army at cheaply and quickly. That also helps you in the mid game getting knights upgraded. You can switch into cab archers for raiding. Forward crate post is a really nice offensive, aggressive move in the mid game if you want to play that. And then in the late game, cheaper siege upgrades enable you to get to that really nice siege warfare kind of style you want to play. And then the stirrups upgrade gives you one of the best power spikes in late castle age and early imperial age with your hussars and cavaliers. So for me, Bulgarians are an easy S tier. A civilization that in order to feel like I think you're you're getting those savings and you're able to, to really benefit and almost feel like you have an eco bonus, you have to play aggressively. And there's a couple other civilizations on this list as well that are the same way. So you definitely want to be playing this with a lot of aggression. Now, a civilization you might not want to play with aggression is Burgundians. I'll put them in the C tier. I think their early Imperial Age power strike, uh, power strike, power spike is extremely strong. If you get Cavalier in Castle Age, which takes a little bit of time to research, you hit Imperial Age, get Paladin, extremely strong move, and you can spam them with your economy for a long time. And the upgrade is so cheap. So based on that, I'll give them a C for having a really nice early, uh, having a really nice early imp power spike that many other cavalry civilizations don't have. But other than that, I think it plays out pretty slowly. Next up, we have the Burmese. I think Burmese will put them in the B tier. Uh, your men at arms rush is great because of the extra damage you do, the early, the rather the the cheap or rather free. Uh, wood upgrades are fantastic for keeping aggression going. I just think you start to slow down in the mid game and because you don't really have, you have decent, you know, you have decent knights and decent hussars, but you just don't have great mobility and it, it can feel hard then to control the pace of the game with the civilization from the mid game onward where you're thinking about how you're going to transition maybe to elephants or playing infantry late. You can go for hussars and try to do that. Uh, but you're, they're still just fully upgraded to Hussars, though. If you can get to the Mana per Cavalry or up against an Archer Sieve, that can be pretty interesting. I gotta say, I've never done that that much. I don't see the upgrade research that often. So uh, that's one thing about, about Burmese, if I were going to make a suggestion to the developers to change, is to incorporate that Mana per Cavalry where maybe it's like plus one attack versus Archers in each age and do it that way so the civilization can actually benefit from it. So anyways... Devs, that's your free advice, right? You can uh, write me a check later. Anyways, moving on to the Byzantines. Um, definitely a top defensive sieve. I think that they're a bottom tier aggressive sieve, though. I think before the crossbow arbalist uh, cost upgrade, so that nerf, I would have put them in the C tier because I do think early Imperial Age arbalist is a nice power spike. I just think it's so expensive to get to now, and you're always doing that on a fragile economy. So I think for that reason, I got to put them in the D tier. Now, for the Celts, K 
Celts, I think, are really, really tricky. I'm going to put them in the B tier, which is, I think, a little higher than one might think. The men at arms and archer rush, early rushing with the civilization is really good. And you do have in the mid game the really powerful siege to where you can do that all in Huang style of play. And, you know, you're really taking control of the game at that point. Uh, so, Celts have some options they can go for, but I do think in Castle Age you have really poor military in the mid game, missing bloodlines on knights, and your crossbows missing thumb ring. And you wind up having to make so many transitions with the civilization that I just think it's hard to play aggressively. Now, if we look at the Chinese, I'll also put them in the B tier. You have a really nice economy and cheap upgrades to get things going, but the two knocks I'll, I'll put against them are that the really unique start, I think, makes it difficult to go for super fast early aggression kind of play. And I do think it's important to realize that you don't really have a lot of bonuses to your units and even though you have a really strong variety, I do think at some point it does feel just a little vanilla. And you're relying on, you know, that economy, getting those cheap upgrades. I think with Chinese, you're, re you're relying on the fact that you want to get the right units out in the field to accomplish the mission. And they are pretty high quality, but you don't really have that many overpowering units. Um, you know, Chukunus are really the only unique thing I think you have. And... I feel like that dies kind of hard to onagers that can get out mobilized just because its range is so short. I think it's a good unit, but um, I just don't think it's as uh, it's quite good in an aggressive context. Now, next up, we have the cumins. I think cumins are extremely interesting these days. I think they're stylistically they're one of the most diverse civilizations in the game right now, and I gotta give them I gotta put them in the A tier. So. The, the ups for cumins are you have really cheap ranges and stables that enable you to go for some really gnarly aggression in Feudal Age. And even being able to make rams in Feudal Age to take out buildings is crazy with the cumins. I think in the mid game, right, um, you have a nice power to spike if you go 2TC. Now that is a bit more defensive and you, you lose a lot of map control. So I don't really count that as an aggressive strategy as much as it is kind of like a turtling and then pushing out sort of strategy. It's not really initiative based. But the real initiative thing I like for the Cumans is that the Step Husbandry technology, which is very affordable, just allows you to spam Light Cav, or you could do it with Step Lancers or Cav Archers, but it's really the Light Cav. And I think that the power spike from Step Husbandry is really, really solid. And so I'll put them, I'll put them in the in the A tier. I think they're really good for aggression. Now next up is the Dravidians, and this is also kind of a tough one. I'll put them in the C tier. Um, I will say I think they have A or S tier early game aggression, right? Your lightning fast men at arms rush, really nice archer rush, right? You can get up early and you have a ton of wood. And I think that, you know, if you're staying on crossbows, being able to try to get the like fast ballistics is good. I do think that this is one of the civilizations that really got hurt by the crossbow arbalist nerf because you're kind of reliant on them in some cases, unless you're gonna go for elephant archers uh, which again, that's kind of a slower unit, though. I think it's a, still a strong unit for Dravidians in the mid game because they do fire faster and that helps out their aggressive potential. But I do think your mid game with this civilization feels very limited in, in how you take map control. And so that's kind of a tough thing to deal with. But on the other hand, you know, the early game's good. And I think in the late game now with your late game units are just really slow. I, I think that I would love to see the... Dravidian Light Cavalry be able... I'd love to see more Woot Steel Light Cavalry with the Civilization, but I suppose that's a video topic for a different day. I, I think there's something that can be done with the Civilization, not to give it great cavalry, but at least to give it cavalry that has kind of like a glass cannon feel, right? And maybe maybe helping out their Light Cavalry could do that. I don't know. Uh, I'd be interested to know what other people thought about that. Moving on to the Ethiopians. Hmm. This is interesting too, I think. I think I think I like them. So actually, you know what? I think I'll put them in the A tier. I think Ethiopians are one of the smoothest archer civilizations to play, maybe behind the Britons, because you get the free food and gold in each age. It's a really nice for getting the kind of units you want out in the field. And the free pikemen upgrade, I think, makes it possible to really sustain aggression in the 
in the mid game because you can make a few spears, they automatically become pikemen. And that's great for continuing your pushes in the mid game. And then your siege late is really strong. My only knock on them is that when it comes to dealing with mobility, the civilization is not very well equipped and I think really, really struggles. And so you gotta keep that in mind. So not the best aggression, but still pretty darn good. Next up we have the Franks and this is tough. It's either an S or an A tier. So I think the arguments for A tier, let's think about this. The argument for A tier is that you have, can get really high quality scouts in the field really fast. Um, good eco upgrades to your feudal age can be very aggressive. The fact that you don't have to pay for bloodlines is a really nice savings and can enable you upon castle age to get a really good night spam going. Cheap castles, it's kind of like Krapos. You can really use them to go forward early when other civilizations wouldn't. And I think to me what really cinches it in the S tier is in the late game. Having the chivalry technology means that your, well, let's just say substandard light cavalry, you can spam so many of them out in the field. You can get the paladin upgrade to research quicker if you want to research that. So, you know, I think chivalry used to be a stronger technology, but I think it still actually has some, some good applications for helping you control the pace of the game and just flood your opponent with, with raids late. And so, you know what, for that reason, I think I got to put them in the S tier. Taking a look at the Goths, oh my gosh. I'll put Goths in the C tier. I think of the early game shenanigans with getting Loom really early and harassing your opponents and walling things off. Um, you know, messing around with your boar to try to kill them early, that kind of thing. Goths do have some early game potential. Even doing early men at arms rushing, I think. Goths have a, an early game, I think, that is so that feels surprisingly above average to me. I just think it's basically from that point on, you are typically just kind of trying to build the spirit bomb and drop it on your opponents in like mid imperial age. And for that, so you only have that one power spike in my mind. Gurjaras. I think before their nerf, I would have put them A tier. I think afterwards I'll put them B tier. Um, you know, now that they're, now that their mills don't generate food as quickly, I think it's a little bit more difficult to get up with them using that bonus and really put pressure on your opponent. Where I think the civilization has a really nice power spike is in the castle age, where you can go for camels, Shravamsha riders, or some mix. And I also think in imperial age, you have a really good set of power spikes with, once you get the shotgun throwers out in the field, they are... I mean, they are, it's like the world is just a bowling alley to Shravamsha Riders and your, you and your, the opponent's units are the pins and the, uh, the, the, the Chakram Throwers knock them down, right? So I think Chakram Throwers, to me, I actually think the best unit that, that Kajaras have. Uh, and then you combine that with the, after the Kshatriya's technology, cheaper every food unit and all your units that you rely on with the civilization tend to cost food. So it just benefits you so much. Um that I think that that's a great power spike as well. I just think that it's a civilization early. It doesn't quite take initiative as much as it used to. And that's probably a good thing. Now next up, and this is a nice counterpoint to the Grajaras. I think Hindustanis, I'll put them in the A tier. Um, you know, whereas the Grajaras have an eco bonus that's a little bit more unwieldy, Hindustanis, it's good in the early game and it just gets better as the game goes on. So you can do basically, I think every kind of Feudal Age aggression at an above average pace. And I even think with the light cavalry doing extra damage to buildings, it's really nice for putting pressure on your opponents that want a wall if you open scouts. And that's something that a lot of players going scouts struggle with or stealing with walls. Hindustanis really make it difficult on your opponent. So I think that's fantastic. I think Castle Age, it's, uh, it's pretty darn good with having great camels. You have fully upgraded crossbows. You can do a lot of things that you want. I do think missing knights in the mid game does hurt your rating potential. And there are games, I mean, I often play games that I close out in Castle Age just because I'm able to raid under town centers, sustain fire with plus two armor. Hindustani camels don't really make up for that despite the damage that they do to buildings. And I also think in the, I also think in the late game, getting to hand cannons if you need them can be a bit trying. Getting to Ghulam can take a little bit of time. Again, once you get Ghulam out in the field though, I think they have a lot of aggressive potential. Um, though they have been nerfed recently. So, you know, my thoughts on that might be a little outdated, but still really good. So Hindustanis, I think 
based on the, 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 the strength of being able to sustain pushes, having an answer for everything, and their early game aggression, I'll put them in the A tier. Looking at the Huns, hmm. Huns, I think, got to go up in the S tier, right? Maybe not the best civilization these days, but still very strong, especially if you're playing them aggressively, right? They're a civilization that you have to play aggressively with to get everything out of them. Faster working stables, not, not needing houses enables you to get some good uptimes. Cav Archers can be a really nice power spike. Knights from those faster working stables is a great power spike. And then in late game, it all just gets better. The Cav Archers get cheaper and you can spam Hussars for days. Huns, in my, without a doubt in my mind, I think they're a good S tier. And I will say their trebuchets have you more accuracy. Allows you to win treb wars when you're pressing on opponents. And that has some underrated value, I think, for for dictating the pace of the game and sustaining pushes on your opponent. So, uh, Huns, gotta put them in the S tier. Next up, we have the Incas. Hmm. This is kind of tough for me, actually. I think Incas are somewhere in the C or B tier. I want to say C tier because I think they have a lot, a lot of nicer, sort of like nickel and dime eco bonuses early to get up a little bit faster. But I don't feel like this is a civilization that, from that point, plays very aggressively. I think that they play more of a reactionary play style where you're going, oh, you're going cavalry. I'll go like Kamiuks or Halberdiers or something. Oh, you're going infantry. No problem. I got slingers. Oh, you know, you're going archers. Hey, well, I still have, you know, like my own, you know, fully upgraded arbalist and, you know, uh, and skirmishers that I can take the minimum range off of. Which is an okay bonus, uh, but yeah, I think in general though, you just don't see the same power spikes. And, and because you don't have a good late game eco bonus, I think that with Incas, you always kind of feel like you're on a timer to do damage. And you're really hoping that you can get into the unit that counters what your opponent's doing and then, and then take over the game from there. Now, meanwhile, look at the Italians. Um... Again, yeah, it's really close to under C or B tier. I actually think I put them in the B tier. I think Italians have a lot of nice potential. The cheaper age of times is really good for pushing out. Um, again, it's it's modest, but getting up a vill, or, a vill early or something is really good. And you could do that in each age. So you have a nice, you know, like a, a small, maybe not a power spike, but a power nudge in that, uh, in, in that area. But I think the cheaper university techs and getting ballistics sooner is really good. Getting chemistry sooner because again the reason you get them sooner is because they're cheaper right that's fantastic um and i think having hussars in the late game this is a civilization that you can do those late game raids with and i'll also give condottiero a little bit of credit um it was a strategy you saw for a long time where on islands maps people would go like fast dump into condottieri and just you know swallow their opponent's hole because condos create quickly they're a decently durable unit and they do some damage, they move quickly. So I think condos have some good aggressive potential as a unit. I'd like to see more of them because I'm not really sure that we figured out, uh, you know, where exactly they're best to be used, but they can be really helpful for a nice early imp push. And so for that, I think there's enough power spikes to put them in the B tier. Japanese. Japanese, I think are a very, very difficult sim to evaluate in terms of aggression. I, they're either A or B tier, and let, let me say it this way. I think the Japanese have S tier early game aggression. One of the best men at arms rushes in the game. I think one of the best archer rushes early as well. Um, in the mid game, I think you're starting to lose some of the effects of that, though I do think, you know, playing... You know, playing knights, playing cav archers with the civilization is really, really strong too. And I think if you're playing cav archers, you can kind of use the the uh, cheaper resource camps. You can get a little bit more, I would say, leverage out of that bonus because instead of, you know, you can actually go ahead and refresh your lumber camps. It's not going to cost you that much wood, and you can keep your wood efficiency very high to keep making cav archers and get your upgrades. I just think in Imperial Age, the civilization, the power spike is really kind of rough to me. And on the one hand, you know what? I think, let me, I think I do have to put them in the A tier and here's why. 
even though it's you don't have the eco to to make the most in terms of your power spike you do have really high quality units whether you're going cab archers or 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 arbalist fully upgraded which is something that not a lot of sims can say and if you're going infantry right your infantry is going to be doing a lot more damage and so it's just very strong and i also think that with the asama tower potential of the civilization going forward towers of the japanese is a really nice late it's actually it really is honestly in some ways um their late game power spike and so i think if you put all of that together this sounds a bit more like an a tier civ and so given that we skew a little bit more towards early aggression here i'm willing to give it to the japanese Next up, we have the Khmer. I mean, Khmer is another kind of example to me of early game aggression because not needing the houses is fantastic. Probably S tier. But I'm going to put it in B tier and thinking about it with comparison to the Japanese. I mean, you do have the really good farms for night spams. Boy, I mean, it's, it's really tough. But the thing about the Khmer is that I just don't feel like you have the really strong military options in as you go throughout the game to really put the pressure on your opponent. With Khmer, it's different. With Khmer, you're putting pressure on opponents using your eco to just generate a whole lot of, say, knights or something like that. But I just feel like that's countered a bit too easily. Whereas I, I look at a civilization like Japanese, and I see a civilization that can go easily go crossbowmen comfortably, easily go cav archers comfortably, can really go in all in castle age Japanese knights. Trust me guys, it's a thing. Um, I, you know, it, you can definitely do it. Maybe I'll do a video on it actually sometime here in the future. Um, it can be very strong. You have to switch off of it, but that's okay because you have a lot of strong, you still have strong archery ranges and strong barracks units. Um, and so I just feel like with Kamura, you just lack the unit variety to me that makes it, that I think it would, to take that eco and make it A tier. And next up we have the Koreans. I think that's easy D tier. You know, because you get free armor upgrades, I think that that's almost a metaphor for like, hey, play defensively. Uh, defensive towers are great. Offensive towers can be good with a civilization as well, I think. But you don't have this much DPS. You have to actually get the castle age tech to get the range and that to me i actually like yasama a lot better for that because i like having a lot more damage especially dealing with those high power uh those high pierce armor units in the later stages of the game and i think that being able to defend against say, like bombard cannon pushes with koreans with the extra range that to me just seems more defensive next up we have the lithuanians i'll put them in the b tier as well um and that's of course you know you have a Again, S tier early game aggression. Fantastic. I just feel like after that, the civilization slows down a lot. In the mid game, you're trying to pick up relics and trying to, you know, get the extra damage. I do think in late game, the civilization kind of comes back with the winged hussars and the faster moving uh, spear and skirmisher units. I think it actually have some interesting aggressive potential because you can just kind of, you know, like lean on your opponent so much, uh, you know, with this, uh, this really cheap army this army of the poor but um but I st to me i still think that that's you know that's not enough i don't think the unit variety is quite there to get us to the uh, the a tier now next up we have the magyars and this is another civilization it's like the bulgarians uh i gotta put it in the s tier um it's weird to put a civilization that doesn't have a proper eco bonus into the s tier but again them being in the s tier is dependent on the way you play them if you play them the wrong way, I think they're probably more of a B tier. But if you play them by, say, taking advantage of your cheaper scouts, taking advantage of your free attack upgrades, you have incredible power spikes, right, in Feudal Age, Castle Age, and Imperial Age with the civilization. And you have the unit, you have such strong units, fully upgraded paladins, you have fully upgraded cavalry archers, and then you can add extra damage and range to them. Even a fully upgraded Arbalist that can see more. And I really like their Foot Archer line for doing aggression because if you're sending Foot Archers to somebody's base, you can think about this. How many times have you had a push slow down because somebody was building a tower just a tile or two out of reach and they're able to get it up because you just didn't see it in time, right? 
With Magyar archers, you typically do see it, and often what that means is you can stop it. And so I think that's really nice for aggression. It's also nice for seeing mangonels in Castle Age. You do have to kind of think about range a little bit differently um, in terms of like how you're perceiving it. But once you get used to it, I think it's a really, I think it's a really low key bonus. I probably mentioned it a few times on this channel. And so I just see a ton of power spikes with the civilization, but it's conditional on how you play them. So remember to try and play Magyars as aggressive as possible. Next up, Malay. Classic to me, defensive civilization. Getting up early uh, can be good for aggression, but you might not have the eco you want to do it. And this is a civilization I think that typically relies on its eco bonus more to generate villager advantages. You see this on arena all the time. And what you're often doing is getting up to imp faster, getting to like a bombard cannon arbalist, or maybe, you know, bombard cannon trying to build up into the two handed swords. It, it's just not, it's not great for aggression. Um, I think it's more of a build up kind of sieve. Though you can, it's worth noting, you can use the age up bonuses. You can try to tailor them towards aggression. Hmm. Next up we have the Malians. Either A or a B. I think for me I gotta put them in the B tier. Um, I think the cheaper buildings is really great. And also the Pierce Armor on the Men at Arms is great for your feudal openings. I like that you have a really solid mid-game tech tree with the Civ. But you just have weird transitions in Imperial Age. Where you're either trying to build into... Into the champions with the extra pierce armor and that takes a lot of time to get to or you're trying to get Farimba on your cavalry units and that can take a little bit of time to get into as well and your crossbow line you know you have arbles but no bracer so it just kind of feels like it stalls out so i just i i think that the civilization has some good things they do early but the imperial age the early imp for the civilization is really tough and so i just don't feel like you have a a great power spike late and so for me that puts them in the b tier um a, a really fun civilization to play though i gotta say one of, well, i think they're one of the most fun civilizations to play but that's just me next up we have the mayans either s or a tier I, i'm gonna put them in the a tier i think for me what makes mayans different than aztecs is that mayans can have some really really bad matchups and Mayans, I think for their eco, they're typically getting up kind of at a standard time, but with an extra villager, your resources last longer, which is really nice for your late game and being able to sustain units, but you don't have a lot of units to choose from. And so Mayans, I think classically can just kind of run up into some bad, bad matchups. I think that they, I think they really struggle against those civilizations that have a competent archer line and strong infantry, right? I, I think about civilizations maybe like Japanese even, right? They can they can do that. That's just one example. But um, I think Vikings can be a struggle, right? Because they have, you know, pretty good archers and they have really nice eco as well. And then they can get to the, the, uh, the infantry. Um, so I think that they have bad matchups to me and that makes it kind of, I feel like playing aggressively is maybe something that they could struggle with just a bit. Next up we have the Mongols. To me, our Mongols are an easy S tier. Uh, great early game bonuses with the faster hunt and the scouting. For me able to see what your opponent's doing, you get up, you can get up light and fast with the civilization. I would say the mid game, it slows down a little bit. You have a really, you have a really diverse military unit comp. I gotta think about this. Your mid game really slows down with this civilization. Hmm. I think that this civilization, now that I think about it, right, calling an audible here, I like the unit comp that you can go for in the mid game with knights, step lancers, camels, what have you. But the problem is that if you go that route, it creates a transition. And I also think that with their foot archers, because they do get arbles that are just missing the last armor, but that's not really a power unit that's going to give you that really strong imperial age power spike. And I think for that reason, because you're kind of, you know, past the mid game, you're really kind of trying to power into Mangadai. And if you get there, it's a really fat, it's a really great unit that you can take it to your opponent with. And that's why it's like right in the line. If we were sorting these sieves out between the tier list, I'd probably put it top of A tier. But 
I think as it stands, the transitions for the civilization can be tough because you're missing the last armor on the cavalry as well. So your castle age, excuse me, your imperial age power, uh, power spike, if you're having to go into cavalry, it's not as strong. And oftentimes what you're doing with the civilization is you're kind of forcing Mangadai. And that can just take a little bit of time. So I'll put them in the A tier, but know that their early game is just, it might be the best, they might have the best early game aggression of all the civs in the game. Next up is the Persians. I gotta say, I like Persians in the B tier. I think that they're super underrated for their early game potential. The 50 food, 50 wood is really great for doing early rushing kind of shenanigans. Um, I think Persians has a lot of interesting things you can do. I think the town centers working faster really helps them with one TC pushing to play really aggressive, like three stable openings in Castle Age. And I will say, I think the civilization can slow down a little bit in Imp, but you know, you do have the whole stable that you can work with. You know, you can support your army with the crossbows that cost no gold. But I do think later is where it kind of slows down a little bit. And at some point when you add TCs, it actually starts to drain your economy for a little bit and make it more difficult for you to get army out. And so I think there's a point with a civilization, once you really start getting the economy you need to prepare for the late game, I think it can kind of be a struggle to be aggressive at that point. So for me, I got to put them in the B tier. Now, polls are interesting here. I think that poles are also B tier because you really have to prioritize protecting your full works, but you have a really nice unit tech tree and there's a lot you can do with this civilization using those full works too, uh, to keep the aggression going on. So it's one of those civilizations that's weird. It's like, once you, if you can defend your farming, you can play aggressively, but you have to defend your farming first. And for me, that kind of sounds a bit more B tier, but I love the unit variety of the civilization. You have some really, really strong units. and. You know, definitely in the mid game, if you get to the Slasha privileges, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, but you can control the tempo of the game and even win games in the mid game with that. So um, I think that's enough for a B tier. Portuguese. I think Portuguese are a C tier. The power spike with Portuguese, I think that's out there, is being able to go double gold comps when other civilizations will struggle with it. That is. Portuguese, I think their early Castle Age power spike is very, very strong for maintaining that really hefty army of just high quality units because you're saving so much gold. And for that reason, I'll put them in the C tier. I even think Portuguese might have some hidden early rushing potential and it just hasn't been figured out how to incorporate the gold bonus yet. But, you know, maybe that's something to think about in another video. Saracens... I think Saracens are the same kind of thing, where Saracens with the markets, they kind of have a nice one trick they can do to turn the aggression on and just turbo into to, to crossbows really quickly and get to Castle Age faster. But I feel like that's kind of the one trick they have. I will also say that they have pretty good siege. Um, good siege with the sieve. I would say just a good tech tree in general that they can go for. The market bonus can help you kind of get there, but it's always, at some point though, that mar that bonus really wears off. And at that point, I feel like the civilization can feel, can feel a little bit fragile in terms of its ability to actually do aggression. So that's tough. It's really tough. And I think missing Cavaliers is a big knock against it. So for that reason, I think we got to put them in C tier. Sicilians. I think this is another C tier civilization but I will say two things about Sicilians that I love. And I think that I would say before the nerf to their bonus damage absorption, I'd maybe put them in the B tier because I think that their feudal age can just be really strong with all in, uh, all in feudal age play with, you know, scouts that can tank a lot of damage and also skirmishers that can tank a lot of damage as well from other skirmishers. And so it just felt like you could have an overwhelming army. That power spike's been diminished a little bit, but I still think the power spike from getting the Halbrook technology in Imperial Age is really strong with the Civ. And just being able to absorb bonus damage, I think, uh, gives them a lot of aggressive potential. So, uh, still pretty good Civ. Oh, and they can also hit the First Crusade button. That's true. And, uh, though, you're, you kind of have to play into that. So, I'm not sure if I would classify that as an aggressive civilization. Oh, excuse me, an aggressive move as much as it is kind of a turtle up and get to it. Slavs. I wish Slavs, there's a lot that I wish about Slavs. 
What I would say with Slavs is their power spike is really in the mid game relying on their farms. It's a civilization that's kind of like Khmer, except Khmer can do the crazy wild uptimes and the, when Slavs can't. I do think Slavs have a... I think with the new castle technology, they have some potential, but you're still kind of powering into it. It's just not that aggressive, but I do think the faster working farms is good. I think it's a civilization that's right in the same sort of tier with Khmer to me. Spanish, easy D tier. You know, you're missing units like the crossbow that you often need for some for early mid game for <laughs> early mid game. You know, the like once you hit mid game, right? That the castle age, that aggression. Um, not needing the the gold on your blacksmith upgrades, I think, is nice. But it's something that I think more just helps you transition a little bit easier. Uh, compare it with the Bulgarians who are saving all that food and who are getting to that faster. You, it, with Spanish, you don't feel like in the in, in feudal age that you, know, you can just get all your blacksmith technologies like oftentimes you can with a civ like Bulgarians. Um, conquistadors take a little while to get into as well. So, you know, this is, it's, a, it's just not a very quick civilization. Um, maybe uh, on Arena, Castle drops are good, uh, but yeah, that's a little bit more situation. Tatters, hmm, either a B or a C tier. I, I think I put Tatters in the B tier. I think the sheet bonus translates you into saving wood. That enables you to get to farms and buildings that you might not be able to get to early. And the thumb ring power spike. Free thumb ring is such a good power spike in in Castle Age, and I think based on that, and the free, this is a civilization that it feels really smooth to get the Cav Archers with too, so I think the, the power spikes there are pretty good as well. Teutons, uh, pretty slow sieve. I gotta put them in the D tier. Um, you know, this is just a slow push sieve, even your knights are slow. <laughs> so, uh, they're strong, strong. Um, Teutons, I feel like, Teutons are like a sumo wrestler, you know, they kinda just like, they kinda just lean on you for a while, and then, you know, eventually push you outside of the circle, right? Uh, with with surprising dexterity. So I like Teutons a lot as a sieve, especially actually in team games. But in terms of aggression, maybe maybe not the best. Turks. Hmm. I mean, I almost think Turks have to play aggressively. I, I think they're more of a B tier aggression though. So you have some really nice power spikes. Faster gold miners is really good for getting units out. The extra pierce armor on your scout is fantastic as well. Yeah, I think there's a lot to like about the Civ. Your, your Imperial Age power spike is so good. And the free scout upgrades is really nice. You can do all in light cav play with Turks. And that's something no other Civ can really do. Tanky cav archers are great as well. Honestly, I think it's one of the better aggressive civilizations in the game. And you kind of have to play that way. And the free chemistry is just so good with civilization. It really is. Um, because you can start getting bombard cannons out immediately, hand cannons immediately. A lot to like. Definitely, I think of an above average. Uh, you know, even though there's a lot of civs in B tier, I'd put it a bit higher on the list. Vietnamese are interesting too. I don't think that they're as aggressive as a civ, but I will say that often with Vietnamese, you can feel like you get ahead because you save so much wood on your eco upgrades. And then early knowing where your opponent is, you can kind of hang around your base a little bit more, lure some deer, kind of get, but you're kind of getting yourself set up uh, with Vietnamese as opposed to taking it to your opponent really quickly. As a civilization has a nice tech tree, has units I think with a lot of survivability, but not necessarily, but not, it's not necessarily meant for aggression so much. So um, still, it's still a good sieve. You, you know, again, most of these sieves you can play aggressively with. And you can with Vietnamese. I still think it's quite as good as the other sieves. And the Vikings. Vikings, I think, are extremely interesting, actually, in terms of aggression. I don't know. i got to put them in either A or B tier. So... I think i got to put Vikings in the A tier, and here's why. Having all the HP on your minute arms makes your minute arms are extremely strong. And you're getting wheelbarrows as soon as you hit Feudal Age. So your eco is really starting to turbo. And that's great for sustaining pressure. And then 
in the mid game, right? You're getting handcart for free as well. So your eco is spinning even more into amazingness. And the fact that you have such strong eco, even though your knights are some of the worst in the game, I've seen Viking Night Rushes win games because you can just get so many units on the field. And that's really, I mean, you gotta, that's pretty strong. The one knock on Vikings, to me, it definitely keeps them probably closer to the B tier. And I would put them bottom of all, probably all the sibs on this list that are in the A tier. Is that even though you get a nice early game power spike, the fact now that Arbalist and Crossbow are more expensive, I think Vikings with a better eco can kind of make up for it to afford it easier when other sibs can't. But it still hurts you a lot because you can be very reliant on Arbalist or transitioning to infantry. And Berserks are extremely uh, expensive. Their upgrades take time. Chieftains was made ex more expensive recently. And I think that that's kind of rough. So for me, I just think that we got to put we gotta put Vikings in the A tier. We can't put them in the S tier. And I also think there's a good argument now that Arbalist don't have Thumb Ring even. I think there's a good argument to even put them in the B tier. With this civilization, you are playing on a timer, and I think what gets them to me into A tier is they just have so many power spikes. And but having said all of that, though, when I think about them compared to Turks in terms of aggression, the thing about Turks is that Turks have the mobility and Vikings don't. And so I think if Turks are going to be B tier. I just don't see a way that I could put Vikings in A tier. Even though you have the economy, Turks have the, the gold miners. I think the real question for me is, are Turks an A tier aggressive Civ? Maybe. I don't know. What do you all think in the comments, right? Do you think Turks... Because Turks do have some interesting plays in them. But you know what? I'm going to leave the tier list as is, right? Um, if I had a beer plus tier, I'd probably put Turks and Vikings in there, but we don't. We only have, we only have the, the tiers that, that the tier list makers gave us. I mean, technically I could change them, but I'm not, right? This is the tier list. As you can see, right, you know, a decent number of sieves at the top and the bottom. It's pretty normally distributed. A lot of sieves kind of in the middle, and it's probably the way the game should be. But anyways, hey guys, this is just my opinion. Let me know in the comments if you have some agreements, disagreements. If I did this tier list tomorrow, I'd probably change it a little bit, um, you know, because, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's just my own assessment, but uh, I'd be interested to see what other people thought about it. And I hope this video has been helpful. With that being said, I'm Jim and James 59, and I hope to see you guys out there on the ladder. Peace.